we love to talk about these electric vehicles, right? There's always updates, always lots of news. And for that, we bring in our panel right now. Joining me, Steve Wesley, founder, managing partner of the Wesley Group. It's good to see you. Glad you're here. I mean, are you excited when you're hearing about Tesla and full self-driving in Europe, in China, in the first quarter of 2025? I mean, that feels like next week. <laughs> it is like next week. Look, it is a whole new world. Everybody's beginning to realize EVs are coming and they're coming fast. If you look at the U.S., 18% of all cars sold this year will be EV or hybrid. Europe, it's a little over 20% already. But in China, it's over 50%. So this is a whole new world. The big question is how soon can the U.S. catch up with China on EVs? Their vehicles are heavily subsidized. The good news is battery costs are coming down. EVs are getting cheaper every month. You will see by the end of the year, the green premium, the extra cost you had to pay to get an EV is gone. Uh, EVs are gonna cost less than ICE engine vehicles for the rest of our lives. Now the big question is who rolls out full self-driving first? Tesla has had some fits and starts, but they're getting close. We're gonna hear a lot more on October 8th. Uh, you mean October, is it October 10th? Um, it was 8-8 and then 10-10, is that right? I, I think you're correct, 10-10. Uh, um, so, anyhow, in October, you're 100% correct, Steve. Hatem Diab, managing partner, Gerber Kawasaki Wealth Investment Management. We, you know, it's undeniable. We, you always said, you know, you were trimming on Tesla at the right time. Tesla got really beaten down. But then we've seen a comeback. We've seen it up about 30% in three months. And I know you still held some stock. You didn't sell at all. What, what say you now about Tesla? Well, I think, listen, the, the idea that uh, I think what, 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 what Steve has just said about EVs are 50 percent in China and only 10 percent in the U.S. and Europe is really gives you how much potential uh, Tesla can have by selling more EVs around the world. Uh, the problem is the valuations that we, 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 see, we see in Tesla is valuations of a, of a software company. And I think what Elon has done this year is like refocus on the robotaxi, refocus on FSDs, because he wants us to think of Tesla as a software company. And, and if we don't see them really execute, if we don't see them uh, kind of come up with FSD in a way that is uh, maybe a, a four or a three or four at least uh, for autonomy standpoint, I think uh, Tesla will have some issues. Yeah, you know, uh, Gordon Johnson, who has been a guest here and is a notorious bear on Tesla, he actually said there's a formula. When Tesla doesn't give great numbers, they come out with the full self-driving rhetoric and they say if it's approved and then it, it fails. It's sort of like this pump up overused tactic that is actually a meaningless announcement. Steve, what would you say to Gordon Johnson and the bears out there? Look, uh, Gordon's a little bearish out there, but the, the facts are the facts. Tesla's been consistently late in bringing full self-driving to market, and that is a problem. The flip side is they just have a different strategy from Waymo. Give Waymo some credit. They said, we're going to tackle one city at a time. We're going to do it well. We're going to start in geofenced areas. We're going to make sure we don't have too many mistakes. But most importantly, we're going to get government approvals. They now have government approvals to operate San Francisco, Los Angeles, Phoenix, uh, Austin. They're growing and they're growing pretty quickly. Elon, never one to shy away from a risk, has said, look, we have more experience than anybody. Everybody who drives the Tesla with self-driving features, including me and the sensors, they're capturing more data than anyone. And we're going to flip the switch nationally and perhaps globally all at once. I'm not sure that's the best strategy. They aren't close to getting government approvals anywhere. And right now it looks a little scary because Waymo has government approvals, Tesla doesn't. The question is, how close are they to having not 99 or 99.9 percent .9 uh, safety, yeah. but the 99.999? It doesn't feel like it's going to be here this year or in the first half of next year. It feels like they're falling behind. That puts real pressure on them because Tesla is between two waves of vehicles. They need to get new cars in the market and they're late on that or they need to get closer to flipping the switch. We're gonna find out a lot on October 10th, but Tesla could be looking okay. at two more pretty slow quarters in my book. We're gonna see if Elon can pull a rabbit out of the hat in a few weeks. 
Look, and I know you have BYD as a, a real grower and a potential dominant player in, in the EV space. Neo also, by the way, had a beat on earnings per share deliveries. The loss narrowed. The revenue rose. That's a, been a winner. That's up about 10 percent today. And um, Hatam, I'll give you the open floor to talk about any one of these companies that you want to mention. I will say what? also, what if Trump wins and then uh, Elon Musk is on his team sort of going after the federal agencies for too much regulation. Do you sell Tesla then? Because maybe maybe Elon's distracted. You get the last few seconds and please be quick. Hatem. Yeah, I got. I mean, I'd add to that pending government improvement point is, is really a big one because Elon is not very liked in Europe, and with FSD, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know how how far along they are. Uh, but also, more importantly, we have that election here in the, in, in the U.S. And if the IRA is gone, which is really helping all EVs uh, with the Trump victory, that may be very, very problematic for the whole supply chain for the EV sector. Uh, so those are things that are, are very important. And Elon has been supporting of, of Trump all along. Long. So I think as investors and shareholders, everyone doesn't understand what is the strategy there. Hmm. What's your favorite EV maker these days, Hatem? You get one second. Uh, I, I like Rivian. I, I know it's it's a, it's a speculative play because the company is not really making any money and they're only selling 50,000 cars. But I know I, I like the product. Hatem Diab, Steve Wesley, a great conversation. <laughs> Oh, and your BYD. I said that one. I knew it. Good to see you both. Thank you. Thank you for being with us here on Trading 360.